How me? How are y'all doing today? In a recent video I did, I provided a general and brief overview of verb conjugations in Northern Paiute. I briefly looked at the past, present, and future, providing a general overview and summary. But I'm going to be making now some videos focusing specific, specifically on each of those tenses. Um, and today I'm going to focus on the present tense. As you see in this um, title up here, I have tense in print or in, in quotes. That's because Paiute really doesn't have tense in the same sense as English has tense. And that's because all of these examples that we're going to be going through, they can easily be referring to the, something that happened in the past by adding something like a temporal adverb like yesterday. Um, so let me like look at these first examples and I'll, and I'll explain that to you even more. So this green line here um, refers to the simple. I, I add it, I mean, I mentioned, I refer to it as simple because what it, you have is just the verb root by itself with no suffixation, okay? For example, manakui means to do, one of the words for to do. If I say sunana bisha manakui, means the man is doing well. Um, in a sense, this is right here. Um, it, well, in Paiu, it, it doesn't exist. It's the man doing well. And that's kind of what I mean by there's no real tense, because I could say yesterday the man doing well. And that refers to the past. Um, but when, when you have no temporal adverb or no other contextual information that would um, put this event as taking place in the past or in the future, then it has to be taking place in the present. And so that refer, that goes the same for all of these examples here. If you add a temporal adverb referring to the past or something, it'll it'll put those in the past. But without them, this is how all of these examples are, how you can communicate something taking place in the present in Northern Paiute. So having said that, let's just look at all of these examples as they ha are used in in Paiute to refer to the present. Um, these are all, again, examples taken from actual stories or texts, things that I have heard or read. None of them are anything that I have made up myself. So this second example of the simple root, mahani, I mean to do, to work, to prepare. In this case, sumogotni to kabu mahani, means the woman is working on the bread, presently working on the bread. The third example, so this one is a little different because this do here is a suffix, but this do is what communicates making something, making bread. So, so you add this make suffix to whatever it is you're making. For example, if I said nobidu, nobidu, nobi means house. The do suffix makes, it would mean making a house. So nobidu, I am making a house. This second color here, this reddish or pink or peach color, is the suppletive. Okay, I'm going to do a video all by itself on the suppletive because there's a whole bunch of them. But here's just an example. Um, suppletive basically means that a word, part, such as a verb in this case, it changes the way it looks entirely. Kind of like in English, the word go. Go in English suppletes for tense. So if I say in the present, I go, you go, we go, it's that one word go. But if I change it to the past tense, it becomes went. I went, you went. They are completely different from one another. And that is because they come from different roots, different completely historical roots. And that is the same as what you're going to see here for the word sit in Northern Paiute. In the singular, it is gatu, gatu. In the dual, it's yugui, yugui, and in a plural, it's ata, ata. So the singular example, usu pokumabakatu, means that he was sitting beside the road. I put was, it makes it sound like it's in the past, but it's no, it's currently sitting. He is sitting beside the road. In the dual, so you got two people here, suiza'a tunanakwa no, so the coyote with his nephew, Yogui, they're sitting. And this last example, you got 
Mpatujuba Pahi Momogo Niata means there are three stars. The three stars are three women sitting. Again, I will do a completely different video focusing on suppletives, so let's move on. This blue here refers to the progressive or continuous. Now this one, we're adding suffixes to the root. Okay, adding a suffix to the root to communicate something is continuous, it's ongoing. Uh, the, and these also change depending on the number. So in the singular, you have this suffix wun, wun. So this first example, usu de gawun, usu de gawun, means he is eating. So like our English suffix ing, that you add to the verb eat, when you add wun to the verb de ga, it, it makes it more explicit that it, is, that it is a continuous action, eating. This next example is ne kapa ahiviwun, I am drinking the water. And finally, Sunatsi Hubiaruwun, the boy is singing. And this is just one way of saying the verb to sing in Northern Pai. There's other dialects that have a different word. So the next one, dual, the dual form is wami. Wami means the same thing. wami means those two are dancing. Now again, I don't want to make up any sentences. I want it to be all actual words, sentences that I have heard or read, but I haven't, I can't think of any in this. So I left those blank. But wami is the suffix, so be aware of that. If you ever see this, if you ever hear it, you can have an idea of what it is meaning. And the plural is kono. Okay, this K sound can change to a G in, in between words or in the middle of a word. So just so you know, that's why this is a G here. It says, de kagon, means they are eating. Another example is nemi sagon, we are cooking. And finally, nagagon, they are dancing. So these are suffixes that you add to communicate progressive continuous action. And finally, this, next, this last one is the durative or the imperfective. This communicates imperfective action. In other words, it hasn't been complete yet. And these are all very similar, all of these. None of them have been complete in a sense. They're all continuous, just incomplete. They're ongoing action. This is also, um, a repres this represents rather um, gemination or doubling. And so what that means is kind of you have this word or a symbol, rather a sound that is kind of doubled and it almost comes across as a pause. And, and let's look at the second column actually for, you know, kind of example of it. So you have this B sound. This B sound in Paiyu oftentimes comes across as a, a bilabial fricative where you have these, your, your two lips come together, but you're vibrating. Like in the word hivi up here, hivi. Hivi, or even the word tva for pine nut. Oftentimes you hear people say tva, like a V sound, because it's kind of in between tva, tva. But when it is geminated, it becomes this p, this p sound, hippie, hippie, almost like there's a pause. And of course, when you're speaking fast in normal speech, sometimes that comes across more, you don't really hear it as, as, as much. I'm just enunciating it, articulating it so you can understand it better. So this first example, ne kapahi pi, ne kapahi pi, I am drinking the water. The G sound also can be more of a fricative, like in Spanish, agua. You're not fully stopping that. It's it's a continuous flow of air with friction, agua. Same thing with the G, like in the verb to cry, yaga, yaga, sometimes, or or kaiva, raiva, raiva. But durative or geminated, it becomes k. So this word here, or this sentence, how manina uyaka, how manina uyaka, I am dr Oh, what? I am drinking water. I put the wrong sentence there. It says, why are you crying? Why are you crying? Is what that means. How many how manina uyaka? Why are you crying? Now these other two um, 
columns, they're different. So you have, in this one, when you have a diphthong, so in other words, sounds like ui, i, a, so i, a, ui, what you do is you put a glottal stop before the last e sound. So like in, an example, this word here, by itself, nanishtuhe. Nanishtuhe means to pray. Nanishtuhe, a, a. But when it becomes geminated, that a becomes a, e, a, e. So I am praying to you is ne, e, ma, tu, nanishtuha, e. Ne, e, ma, tu, nanishtuha, e. I'm praying to you. Or the word tenichui. Tenichui means teach. Tenichui. Tenichui. So it's a ui. But that becomes u i with the glottal stop u i. So usu me tenichu i means he is teaching them. Now these other examples are when you have a verb ending in ia ia it becomes i a. So a glottal stop is entered i a. So like this one usu i puni tenakwai i mi a. He saw me going behind him, or in other words, he saw me coming behind him. A verb that ends in ö becomes ö ö ö ö. For example, ö mö kutsu mate mö ö. They are selling cattle. So selling. Te mö ö. They are selling cattle. By itself, this would just be te mö, te mö. But geminated, it's te mö ö. And when you have verbs that end in e, it's e, e e e. I don't have an example here, but for example, tukwi tukwi means to tell. But in a sentence that's a durative or imperfect, geminated, it would be tukwi e tukwi e. So I hope this made sense. If you have any questions, please please feel feel free to ask. Leave them in the comments. Whatever, reach out to me some way. I'd be glad to respond. Um, so these are just, again, all different ways that you can communicate an event, an action taking place in the present in the Northern Paiute language. So until next time, when I do another video on the past and future, um, I hope you have a good day, and I'll see you all later. Punirua.